In this video, we will be using the washer method to find the volume of solids of revolution, except instead of rotating regions around the x and y axes like we did in the previous video, we will now be rotating regions around other axes. However, we will be using the same rule for the washer method that we learned in that previous video. That rule is that v is equal to pi times the integral from a to b, which could be along the x or y axis, of big R of x squared minus little r of x squared. Or if we were integrating with respect to y, it would be big R of y squared minus little r of y squared dy. Big R of x or big R of y represents the outer radius, and little r of x or little r of y represents the inner radius. Here are a few notes for this video. First, be prepared to integrate manually using the fundamental theorem of calculus or integrate with the graphing calculator. You will see both of these pop up in this video and on the AP exam. Second is that washer method problems in which a region is revolved around a horizontal line occur much more often on free response questions than washer method problems where you have the region being revolved around a vertical line. Let f and g be the functions given by f of x is equal to e to the x and g of x is equal to the natural log of x. Find the volume of the solid generated when the region enclosed by the graphs of f and g between x is equal to 1 half and x is equal to 1 is revolved about the line y is equal to 4. The first step for this is going to be to sketch out these curves. So that's what I'm going to do. For e to the x, one point that I know is going to be on the graph is the point 0 comma 1, because e to the power of 0 is equal to 1. So if this is my e to the x curve, the rest of it is just going to look something like that. And the curve for the natural log function is going to look something like this. Now, if you wanted to see what those graphs look like on the graphing calculator, you could do that because this is a calculator problem. So you could just plug those functions in and then see what they look like. Now it says find the volume of the solid generated when the region enclosed by the graphs of f and g between x is equal to 1 half and x is equal to 1. So now I'm going to mark on my graph. I'm going to say this is going to be x is equal to 1 half. And then this right here is going to be x is equal to 1. So this region right here, this is the region that we are dealing with. And it says we need to find the volume generated when it's revolved about the line y is equal to 4. So let me sketch in the line y is equal to 4. That's going to be up here. So envision that we are taking this solid and we are revolving it around the line y is equal to 4. I'm going to sketch in my inner radius and my outer radius. The outer radius will extend from y is equal to 4 all the way down to that bottom curve. And the inner radius will extend from there to right there. And then I'm also going to label these graphs. This one is f of x, which is equal to e to the x. And this one right here is g of x, which is equal to the natural log of x. Now I'm going to come up with my expressions for big R of x and little r of x. So big R of x, big R of x is going to be this one. So we take the top curve, which is y is equal to 4, and then we subtract the bottom curve, which in this case is equal to the natural log of x. So big R of x is 4 minus the natural log of x little r of x is going to be 4, the top curve, minus e to the x, the bottom curve. So 4 minus e to the x for little r of x. Now I come up with the volume integral. And I'm looking from x is equal to 1 half to x is equal to 1. So from 0 0.5 to 1, and then I need to stick the pi on there as well. Pi times the integral from 0.5 to 1 of big R of x squared, so 4 minus the natural log of x squared, minus little r of x squared, 4 minus e to the x squared, close the brackets, and stick a dx on the end. Then just grab the graphing calculator and plug that integral in. Make sure that you're using an appropriate amount of parentheses for these problems. When you do that, you get that the volume is equal to 23.609. Let r be the shaded region bounded by the graphs of y is equal to rad x and y is equal to e to the power of negative 3x and the vertical line x is equal to 1, as shown in the figure above. Find the volume of the solid generated when r is revolved about the horizontal line y is equal to 1. So for the horizontal line y is equal to 1, that's going to be this line right up here. I'm just going to label that one as y is equal to 1. Now, if we're revolving it about a horizontal line, that means that we're going to be doing top curve minus bottom curve somewhere. So when I come up with my inner and my outer radius, my outer radius is going to stretch from y is equal to 1 to this bottom curve down here. And then my inner radius will stretch from y is equal to 1 to this curve. So when I find big R of x, the outer radius, that will be controlled by 1 minus this curve. 
So one minus, and then this one is going to be y is equal to three e to the power of negative x, because I know that y is equal to rad x has that shape. So one minus e to the power of negative three x, then I need to find little r of x, or the inner radius, which will be one minus rad x. So one minus rad x inside there. Then I come up with the integral for the volume. Volume is equal to pi times the integral from this point to one. The problem is I don't know what that point is right there. So I'm going to grab the graphing calculator and find the points of intersection for y is equal to rad x and y is equal to e to the power of negative three x. I will only be looking in the first quadrant. So when I set my window, I'm going from zero to five along x and from zero to five along y. And then I'm also going to jot down y is equal to rad x and y is equal to e to the power of negative three x intersect at which value of x? And then I just have to figure out what is that value right there. So you can do second trace, hit the calc button up there, hit number five for the intersection and move it over to about where the intersection point is. And that intersection is occurring at x is equal to 0 0.23873413. Remember to hang on to all of the decimals here because you're not done with the problem yet. So now we're going from this number to one along the x-axis. So lower bound is 0 0.23873413. Upper bound is one. And then I use my formula for the washer method. So first, big R of x squared, one minus e to the power of negative three x squared minus little r of x squared, one minus rad x squared with a dx on the end. And then I plug that into my calculator because this is a calculator problem to find the volume. Now we know that V is equal to 1.424 and you can either round or truncate. Here's another calculator for your response question. Let R be the region enclosed by the graph of Y is equal to the square root of X minus one, the vertical line X is equal to 10 and the X axis. Part B says find the volume of the solid generated when region R is revolved about the horizontal line y is equal to 3. Part C says find the volume of the solid generated when R is revolved around the vertical line x is equal to 10. I really like this problem because it's going to give us some practice with revolving around both horizontal and vertical lines with the same region. So let's do part B first. I have sketched out region R there just to save some time. This is not a difficult function to sketch. And if you are really having trouble with this on the exam, you can always just get out your graphing calculator and sketch it because that is a graphing calculator problem. So part B, we're trying to revolve it about the horizontal line y is equal to three. So I'm going to sketch that line right up here. And I think it's gonna be somewhere around there. Now, if I'm revolving it around the line y is equal to three, that's definitely gonna be a washer method problem because if I revolve this chunk around y is equal to three, I will have pulled out a chunk from the middle there. So I need to come up with my inner radius and my outer radius. My inner radius is going to be from here to right there, just that tiny little segment. And then my outer radius will be from y is equal to three all the way down to the x axis. So for r of x, big R of x, and it's r of x, not r of y, because we're working perpendicular to the x-axis, big R of x will be the top curve, three minus the bottom curve, zero. So just three. And little r of x, which is the inner radius, will be controlled by three minus this function right here, which is rad x minus one. So three minus rad x minus one. Now I will set up the integral for the volume. V is equal to the integral from one to 10 along the x-axis, and I have to have that pi at the beginning, pi times the integral from one to 10 of big R of x, which is three squared minus little r of x, which is three minus rad x minus one squared dx. Then get out the calculator and plug that in. And it says that the volume of that solid will be 212.058. You can round or truncate. Now let's do part C. Part C says find the volume of the solid generated when R is revolved about the vertical line X is equal to 10. If we are revolving R around the vertical line X is equal to 10, that's actually not gonna be a washer method problem. This is just going to be a disc method problem because we see that the shape that would be formed would be a solid. We don't have to pull any chunks out of the middle or something like that. If you want to review disc method separately, I do have a separate video on that. 
The first step for the disk method is to sketch in the other half of what the function looks like. So it looks something like that. And then if I sketch in one radius, it will be going from there to right there and then sketch in one disk and it looks something like this. Then I need to find what one radius is. One radius is going to be the right curve minus the left curve. But the problem is because I'm working perpendicular to the y-axis, I need to have my equation for this left curve in terms of y. Right now I have y is equal to rad x minus one, but I need to get x isolated. This means that I have y squared is equal to x minus one or x is equal to y squared plus one. So now when I find the radius, which is going to be r of y, radius in terms of y, that'll be the right curve, 10, minus the left curve, y squared plus one. And make sure that you put parentheses around the y squared plus one. Now recall that the formula for the disk method is a little bit different than for the washer method. We do pi times the integral from a to b of r of x squared dx, or r of y squared dy. In this case, since our disks are perpendicular to the y-axis, we need to move along the y-axis to determine our upper and lower bounds. So the lower bound is going to be zero, but then what is the upper bound? Well, the upper bound is going to be controlled by this intersection point right here, the point of intersection between x is equal to 10 and y is equal to rad x minus one. So down here, I'm going to make a note and I'm going to say y is equal to rad x minus one and x is equal to 10 intersect at what point? Well, the x coordinate will be 10 because we know x is equal to 10 and then plug in 10 for x right here to get y. That means that y is equal to the square root of 10 minus one or square root of nine, which is three. So if they intersect at 10, three, that means that this point is 10 comma three. That means that we're going from zero to three along the y-axis right there. So from zero to three of r of y, 10 minus y squared plus one squared dy. That is using the disk method. Then get the calculator and plug that in. Now I can see that the volume is equal to 407.150. That was a good comprehensive review of washer method versus disk method. Let region F be the region bounded by y is equal to e to the x, x is equal to the natural log of 5, and y is equal to 1, as shown. Which integral represents the volume of the solid generated when region F is revolved about the vertical line x is equal to 2? The interesting thing with this one is that we're not actually evaluating. We are simply finding which integral matches that volume integral. So first I'm going to sketch in the vertical line x is equal to 2. That one would be right here. And then I will sketch in my inner and outer radius. My outer radius will be going from here to here. And my inner radius will be going from right here to right here. Now I know that this vertical line right here is x is equal to ln of five or the natural log of five. And this vertical line right here is x is equal to two. So when I come up with my expressions for big R of y and little r of y, and it's y not x because we're working perpendicular to the y axis, this means that I need to have this equation in terms of y also. So if I have y is equal to e to the x, y is equal to e to the x can be written as x is equal to the natural log of y if we're trying to get that equation in terms of y. So now when I do big R of y, that will be two minus the natural log of y, which is this curve right here, two minus natural log of y, and then my inner radius will be two minus natural log of five, because that's x is equal to natural log of five, two minus natural log of five, now I just need to write the integral for the volume. So volume will be pi times the integral from, well, we know this is going to be one. So from one to, but then what is this point right up here? I'm going to calculate this point by taking the equation y is equal to e to the x and the intersecting line, which is x is equal to the natural log of five. If I say y is equal to e to the power of the natural log of five, that's just five because the e and the natural log cancel. Therefore, this intersection point is up at y is equal to five. So we're going from one to five. Then we do big R of y, two minus the natural log of y squared minus little r of y, which would be two minus the natural log of five. And then we square little r of y. And then we put the big brackets on there, which I think I forgot to do at the beginning. Then we stick a dy on the end. This matches answer choice A. Therefore, A is the correct answer. Let R be the region in the first quadrant bounded by the graphs of y is equal to rad x and y is equal to x over three. Find the volume of the solid generated when R is rotated about the vertical line x is equal to negative one. 
So I've pre-sketched out all of these functions here, and their intersection point is going to be at 9, 3. This entire region R is being rotated about the vertical line x is equal to negative 1. So this should indicate to you that this is a washer method problem because there would be a chunk that we would have to pull out of this solid in order to get the desired three-dimensional shape. First, I'm going to come up with big R of Y and little r of Y. And I know that it's going to be R of Y and not R of X because our radii are perpendicular to the Y axis. First, I'm gonna sketch one in. So big R of Y would be extending from the right curve all the way over to the axis of revolution. So from this line, y is equal to x over 3 to x is equal to negative 1. And then little r of y, the inner radius, extends from this line to x is equal to negative 1. The problem is, though, when I'm writing down r of y and little r of y, the problem is that these equations here are in terms of x, and they need to be in terms of y so that I can plug them in here. Therefore, I need to isolate x in each equation. For this one, x would be equal to 3y, and for this one, x would be equal to y squared. So now when I do big R of y, that's this larger line here, the outer radius, this will be 3y minus the left curve, negative 1. So 3y minus negative 1. Little r of y, the inner radius, will be y squared minus negative 1. And if you want, you can rewrite those as 3y plus 1 and y squared plus 1. Now I will develop the volume integral. So volume will be pi times the integral from 0 to 3 along the y-axis there because we're working perpendicular to the y-axis. And then on the inside, we do big R of y squared, so 3y plus 1 squared minus little r of y squared, which is y squared plus 1 squared, with a dy at the end. Then just grab the graphing calculator and plug that in. Remember, it's okay to use x's instead of y's in the graphing calculator as long as you're keeping it consistent because the graphing calculator doesn't care what variable you use. Once you evaluate it, you get that the volume is 130.062. You could also say 061 if you just truncate. Either one of those works. What is the volume of the solid generated when the region bounded by y is equal to x squared minus 1 and the y-axis is revolved about the horizontal line y is equal to 3? The first thing to do, as always, is sketch these functions. Okay, so here's my sketch. The parabola is the line y is equal to x squared minus 1, and then the bounded region is between that function and the y-axis, so it's that tiny shaded region, and we are revolving it around the horizontal line y is equal to 3. So now I need to sketch my inner radius and my outer radius. My outer radius extends from the axis of revolution down to the parabola, and my inner radius stretches from the axis of revolution down to the x-axis. Now, because we're working perpendicular to the x-axis, we are going to be doing big R of x and little r of x, not y. So big R of x, the outer radius, is determined by 3 minus this parabola. So 3 minus x squared minus 1, and make sure you keep the parentheses around the x squared minus 1. Don't just do 3 minus x squared minus 1 because that negative needs to be distributed. And then little r of x will be controlled by 3 minus 0, or just 3. Now let's set up the equation for the volume using the washer method. v is equal to pi times the integral from a to b along the x-axis, which we can see is from negative 1 to 1, since that's where the parabola is intersecting the x-axis. We're going from negative 1 to 1, then we do our big brackets. First thing to do is to do big R of x squared, so 3 minus, and then I'll distribute the negative here, minus x squared plus 1 squared, minus little r of x, 3 squared. Now, we don't get a graphing calculator on this problem, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and clean up what's inside here before I start to do the integration. So v is equal to pi times the integral from negative 1 to 1, and then I'm going to rewrite this as negative x squared plus 4, and that needs to be squared, minus 9, but I can still clean it up a little further. I'm going to have to FOIL this first one out. So that will be x to the fourth minus 8x squared plus 16 minus 9 dx, and then I'm going to replace that 16 minus 9 with a 7 right in there. Now I'm ready to integrate. So I will need to do this manually using the fundamental theorem of calculus. First, I need to find the antiderivative of what's inside here. So volume will be equal to pi times, and then I write down the antiderivative, which is x to the fifth over 5 minus 8x cubed over 3 plus 7x. 
and I'm evaluating that at negative one and positive one. Then I go through and I plug in one and I subtract plugging in negative one, both for x. Now the issue here is that I can't subtract these fractions or I can't even add them until they all have like denominators. I'm going to get them all with a denominator of 15. So I can rewrite this as pi times, and then if my new denominator is 15, that means that my new numerator needs to be 6, 6 fifteenths minus, and then I have to switch 16 thirds over to have a denominator of 15. So I multiplied that by 5, so 16 times 5, I get 80 in my numerator. And then 14 times 15 is 210, so then I have 210 over 15. Then when you simplify that, you get 136 pi over 15. Therefore, C is the correct answer.